You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Special share edition and some awesome people in the house today for share celebrating with us. You might recognize them from End Goals, a youth ministry podcast here on KFUO. Awesome people. The Reverend Mark Kiesling and DCE Juliana Schultz, host of End Goals. Juliana, welcome. Thanks. Glad to be here. Mark, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Always fun to spend some time with our friends from uh, our fellow podcast friends. <laughs> so, yeah. so so listeners who listen to broadcast but maybe don't pick up podcasts might not be familiar with End Goals, but it's a great podcast here on KFUO, produced by our friends in the LCMS Office of National Mission and really doing some great things. But I don't want to tell you all about it because that's why they're here, um, is to share what End Goals is and what it's about and, and who can benefit from it. I have the privilege... I'm getting to edit it. And so every episode I get to like listen and learn stuff. And being a DCE, I still learn tons of things from these great folks and all the guests they have. All right. Who wants to tell me what is what is end goals? Well, first, I'm sorry we make you work so hard on, on the <laughs> editing side, I think, that we keep you really, really I have a lot busy, of fun so. editing it. <laughs> Well, no, I think we'll talk a little bit about the content and the stuff that went into it, but we really just had a lot of opportunity, I think, to talk about a platform that we developed called Seven Practices of Healthy Youth Ministry. We were looking for a spot to talk about that a little bit more, maybe in a longer form. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'll speak for myself. I started listening to podcasts more and realized like how much information I can get when I'm on one and a half speed or two speed, <laughs> like get through podcasts faster. Like, this is a great way for us to talk about some youth ministry topics and also introduce, we have a really long history of great youth ministry in our church body. And we also wanted to lift up some of those practitioners too. And so we thought a podcast was a great way to bring people on as you were helping us through the technology side of things, uh, Sarah and Andy, in terms of how to use more tools and to be able to reach out into our congregations and Concordia University systems and other places to talk about youth ministry. Um, and the podcast enabled us to do that. How long has End Goals been, been with us? Run. I don't almost know. a year and a half. We're mm-hmm. almost to episode Someone's fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we yeah. we've got quite a few. We're we're amassing a bit of a library now, which yeah. has been nice. Yeah. It's we can really actually fun. reference people to like, well, if you want to hear more about this topic, find episodes such and such. It's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fun when you get to that spot in a podcast where where you're like, we've talked about this on this episode, <laughs> and you can actually go back and listen to it. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, and getting to build on uh, new and. Uh, ways of thinking about things and building that kind of reference library of things that people can go back and, and look at. Yeah. So speaking of a reference library, how has End Goals grown since that first episode a year and a half ago? What have you guys been able to do? Well, I would say Mark and I have only moderately improved our skills. <laughs> um, if anything, we've we've uh, just learned to bring in smarter and smarter people um, to, to interview. Uh, but definitely for us, it has become uh, a great place for us to point, particularly lay leaders mm-hmm. who do not have maybe any advanced uh, teaching or instruction on how to do youth ministry and give them a place where they can get short snippets from really smart experts <laughs> in youth ministry across our synod. Um, and occasionally Mark and I, which is disappointing, but uh, but, <laughs> but for us to be able to talk about to them about how they can think about youth ministry if they maybe don't even know quite what they're getting themselves into or little steps that they can take within their ministry to help uh, improve and get those young people to that end goal of being disciples of Jesus Christ for life. What have you learned in the process, Mark? Yeah, I I think one of the things we try to ask our uh, participants, especially if they're first time guests, tell us a little bit about their history in youth ministry. And I've I don't know, I've been shocked somewhat by the wide array of answers we get and how the Holy Spirit works through pastors and DCEs and teachers, church workers, parents, lay people, and like how just these touch points of the Holy Spirit would put someone into a young person's life to encourage them in their daily faith, but then also maybe to can think about career vocations in the church mm-hmm. um, and just what people can remember and what sticks with them about their life as a young person and how the church showed Christ's love to them, how parents showed Christ's love, maybe some difficult times or some really special times. Like that's just been encouraging to me for us to be able to tell our audience too. I think sometimes people who work in the parish at different roles say like, well, does my work really make a difference in the lives of young people? And man, we can say it does. And we've heard yeah. the stories from these people about how maybe the most, the smallest thing maybe makes a huge impact. I think that's been one of the things that I've learned to see the beauty of that in our church body. 
What I really love about end goals, and I do listen regularly because I get to <laughs> yeah, edit. I, 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 I get to. <laughs> what I love is, I mean, it, we get to tell a lot of stories here in the coffee hour. That's kind of that's our our thing. That's what we do. We tell stories. We love to tell stories. But you guys do a great job of not only telling stories, letting letting those in youth ministry share their their own personal stories of what they've learned in the field, but also you both are research people. I know that you people love data mm-hmm. way more than I do. Um, so much. So, <laughs> and you use that data and you you share that research as well in end goals that I think I, it is really helpful to the to the person in the field, to the lay person, to the pastor, to the DCE, to the teacher, whoever, um, who, who loves and cares for youth in the congregation, but you do it in a way that's helpful for the lay person to use. It's not just like data that is useless or irrelevant. I, I know you, I know you love data. Share a little bit more about the research that you love sharing and end goals. Yeah, I am a, a huge data nerd, and anyone who's <laughs> interacted with me really on any res- uh, resourcing platform for youth ministry will know that. But uh, certainly for us, data is wonderful uh, and a gift, but it's only helpful in so much as it can be practically used, mm-hmm. right? Um, only as much as it can inform what we do on the ground in youth ministry. So I can tell you all sorts of things about Gen Z, but that data all by itself isn't going to help us in our youth ministries until we're able to take it and break it apart and talk about, okay, well, what does that mean for me practically as I'm interacting as a parent or as a supportive adult or uh, in the congregation, as a DCE, as a pastor? Um, how does that inform how I design ministry and how I interact with that young person? Um, so, I love data, and we could just talk straight data all the time. Uh, sometimes it's hard that we we podcasts don't allow you to like show images of charts. Like, I think we've managed to stay away from like physically describing what charts look like, but, um, but for, the most part. <laughs> for the most part. But to be able to help uh, people to think uh, about data as a helpful tool for them to be mm-hmm. able to to conceptualize, like, how can this impact practically what I'm doing in my congregation? Mm-hmm. How has this, how has doing this podcast and, and being, uh, diving into all of this this data and research and, and having to put together these episodes, how has it helped you guys in youth ministry to, to do your other work uh, as part of the church? I think for me, one of the, the pieces that we've been able to see is, um, <laughs> There's uh, a lot of, like I said, data, and and I have some practical experience doing youth ministry in the congregation. Um, All of this, I'm helping doing youth ministry now uh, (laughs) as a volunteer in my in my uh, congregation. uh, That one of the things that uh, we have the great joy of doing is being able to like when you have to think about how you're going to teach somebody this thing, Mm -hmm. then you have a chance to sort of go like, okay. I know this thing, but like, how do I help convey that in a way to somebody else that helps them in what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So even just the process of like writing, um, you don't want to go too far behind the scenes, but writing <laughs> scripts, not yeah. not script scripts, but like being able to write down how we want um, to be able to talk about an issue helps me to think about how do I um, do that better in my own ministry, my own experience being, as I think about how I'm going to teach that. But I'm always impressed that no matter uh, what the topic is, we bring in somebody and we're interviewing them. Um, often we'll hear people say something in one interview and then a totally different person, unconnected, totally mm-hmm. different topic, will build on that in mm-hmm. a really new and interesting <laughs> way. And mm-hmm. then we'll have you know a third or fourth person later down the road who will build again on that. Um, and to be able to see how um, we can build these themes you <laughs> we're not trying <laughs> across people who don't even know each other and across different themes to be able to say like, yeah, these are some core pieces of, of ministry, not just youth ministry that are going to come out as God works um, in and through people in those ways. I think I love that. I think Julianne touched on a lot of the spots, how the podcast through the guests we've brought on and going back through these things, the research, the some practices, the other things that may have been written, it's contextualized a lot. So it, it really has, I think, fit well in our LCMS congregational piece. There's a, there's a lot of great stuff you could buy literature for youth ministry, but you're going to read it and you're going to feel like, oh, sure, if I've got a staff of 20, I can pull this off. <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, maybe two churches, maybe in our church body or whatever it might be to where, like, I think it gets down to when we're talking to, like, the lay person, the volunteer who's 
dedicating their hearts to young people in their congregation just to give them that extra encouragement. And at the same time, too, to hear from those people who maybe are in different uh, situations socioeconomically or size of churches. I think it's given that nice round base for me to be able to see like, oh, I even understand now more deeply how this practice plays out in a congregation like this. Mm -hmm. And it's made me be able to communicate better to some of our practitioners, which has been a real blessing. Mm -hmm. What are some of the topics that you've gotten to dig into that you've really enjoyed uh, in this last year and a half? What are some of the topics that End Goals has covered? I know that you've got the seven practices, the, uh, but what are some of the topics? You was, who wants to start? Mm-hmm. I know you okay. both have topics you love. <laughs> so we, we did the seven practices, and I, we've built more on that. Um, we did uh, a series on the research where we just talked about um, our research from LCMS Youth Ministry uh, to be able to break that out for people in a different way. Um, and then we um, after the 2019 gathering, we, were, we had this year of resources. So we were able to bring on the people who wrote those Bible studies um, and interview them about their topics. And what was neat about that was kind of an opportunity um, for them to talk to a lay leader about like how you would use this Bible study um, and what's inside of it to, to help kind of ease them into the usage of that, which was really fun. What am I, what am I missing? I, I think to that kind of connected, what, we did a starter pack last summer. We did. Yeah, a starter pack, which was kind of like some baseline youth ministry things, again, for probably the volunteer youth ministry. That was like the multi-episode blitz, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes I remember yes, yes. that. We kept you busy for a couple <laughs> weeks, I think. Yeah, so we it was were, fun. Yeah, it was good. So we brought good in a lot of experts <laughs> to talk about specifically. Some of them, I think, a little bit you know, within the reflection of where we were at that time in the pandemic, uh, but then also just baseline uh, good youth ministry. And then we tied it a little bit to then we had worked with CPH on a book called Connected for Life, which also had some chapters on some of those baseline things. And so to be able to see, I think, like you're talking about the build on, Juliana, the, con- right. the congruence between those two was great to have different voices talk about the same thing and still see some real baseline stuff about um, just those step by step things where we can care for young people. And so doing those two have been helpful to even go back to that book. It's, you know, it's, it's been out for a number of years, but to go back and revisit those chapters and to see that connection was real helpful for me. So for the person who thinks, oh, it's a youth ministry podcast about pizza and movie nights. <laughs> <laughs> have we referenced pizza oh, good, at all? Oh, good, an episode idea. I know. Sweet, all right. Pizza good. ordering it should be in pizza the next order. starter pack. It's way deeper than that. It's way deeper yes. than, I mean, sure, pizza and movie nights might be a part of the, the quality time that you spend with youth, but it's way deeper than that. So as you pointed out with all the great data and all the research that you use as well. We have more to share about End Goals podcast uh, in just a moment here on KFUO's share on the Coffee Hour, the special share yes. edition. So we'll share that with you in just a little bit. We're talking with Pastor Mark Kiesling and DCE Juliana Schultz, hosts of End Goals podcast. You're listening to KFUO share 2021. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to share 2021. Uh, you're listening to a special edition of The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are talking with the hosts of End Goals Podcast, End Goals Youth Ministry Podcast, uh, DCE Juliana Schultz and Reverend Mark Kiesling, who have been doing uh, just a smashing job of uh, walking us through some great topics in youth ministry for the last, we think, year and a half. Um, we're estimating. We're almost to episode 50. Yeah, are we going to celebrate episode 50? We are, somehow. We know that we're, we just hit forty nine. I think we're there. So you can find the Ed Goals podcast at, at kfuo.org or just about any podcast platform. You can get it there as well. Yeah. This is really kind of the like essential tool for anyone who cares for youth in our church, whether pastors or lay leaders, volunteers, parents, all kinds of folks, anyone who cares about youth in the church, really. And you, you mentioned this in I think in the close of every episode as well. Um, why? Why is there such a need for a podcast like this? 
Mark, do you want to start on start us on that? Yeah, I mean, I think go back to the inception a little. Maybe there was the gathering ones that we started up with, but then getting to like the seven practices was we felt like there were these things that we were having a conversation as a staff, or maybe Julianne and I more, or people as they started to read the seven practices to go just a little bit more deep into some of the things we had written. And so I think the the conversation flow allowed us to put out some questions for others for discussion, for us to answer those too. And so just to have more of that opportunity to d- dive deeper into some of these in a format that, again, I go back in, is really where I think is helpful for people. You got commutes. I listen to the podcast while I'm doing the laundry. It makes it accessible. I may not have time to sit down and read an article, uh, but yet I can get this information. And then you do such a great job with the technology in terms of where it just goes one to another. And you got that opportunity to get, again, uh, wisdom of people in our church body out into the hands of other people and to share that. I'm going to talk about, again, that desire we have to care for young people and help them in their walk as a disciple of Jesus. That I think was one of those reasons that we wanted to do it as a way to convey information that maybe an article is not going to hit um, or maybe not be able to go to a conference, but yet want to make that accessible to people. And you guys have just been a blessing with on the technological side of it to make it possible through KFUO. Have you heard feedback from from people who have been listening to this and like their lives have been just ch- changed forever because they've listened to the End Goals podcast. <laughs> I'm not sure about changed forever. Um, My life has been changed, right? Uh, but uh, but we have heard from people who who do listen regularly, and um, and it's always great to be able to hear uh, how they are um, listening and mm-hmm. using that, or how it's impacting their ministry in a healthy way. Um, because uh, you know we try. And make it so it's not like you have to listen to every every single episode, and um, some might be a little more applicable for mm-hmm. for some context than others. Uh, but truly, just to be able to have um, another resource, you know, we, that's that's a big part of what LCMS Youth Ministry does is resourcing um, youth ministry practitioners in the field, and whether they're professional or lay lay leaders. Um, we have lots of ways that we do that outside of the podcast, whether that's the Youth eSource or at the Gathering or at National Lutheran Youth Workers Conference. Uh, but this is just another way for us to hopefully hit uh, hit differently, hit a different kind of, of way of resourcing and also hit a different group of, of people who might not necessarily sit down and you know, read an article or be able to take time off to come to the National Lutheran Youth Workers Conference or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know, Mark, you mentioned earlier that you listen to other podcasts at a faster pace, like you click it up to like one and a half. Is that right? Absolutely. I was just I check- listen to us at one and a half. I was just going to ask you. Listening to edits, <laughs> so um, so I, I, we are we are definitely can be heard well at one and a half. Yeah. Um, two, we get a little we get a little messy. I I was just checking out the the new KFUO podcast to see if it has that. I forgot to check and see if it has that feature before. It does, but it doesn't have one and a half. It has two. So. You might have to listen on the KFU app. We get a little chipmunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you mentioned like the plethora of of resources and supports for uh, for youth ministry, like the national and um, and the national youth gathering, and all all kinds of resources. Where does End Goals connect with the the national youth gathering? Do you want to share with us a little bit about that connection? Absolutely. So, um, really, this kind of the start of the podcast. We interview some of our speakers that had spoken at the 2019 event just to kind of go deeper into their resource. And they'd also done some writing for us for the eSource. So it was kind of like taking some of those people we brought together around some topics, have a little bit deeper conversation and as a way to utilize the resource that we had and made available. And then we got our gathering starter pack coming up. If you mm-hmm. want to say a little bit about that, preparing for 2022. Yeah. So one of the things that we're going to be doing kind of going into the, the next kind of 15 months or 16 months of prep for the, for the national youth gathering would be uh, that we're going to put out podcasts specifically for people who are planning to come to the gathering with their youth groups. And um, we're going to put out a starter pack in June. That's going to be kind of the the baseline. We're going to release a whole bunch. We're going to make Andy work really hard. Yeah. Uh, he does a fantastic <laughs> job for us. He's just we're such a gift to be able to do that. But uh, we're going to put out, I think, six or seven episodes in June, just as people are kicking off their, their planning, their fundraising, their, their meeting times with their young people. Um, and then throughout that that year we're going to be putting in um, podcasts that are going to talk specifically about that. So um, again, not everyone in our audience is going to be bringing young people to the LCMS Youth Gathering, but um, for those that are, this is going to be another way. And we're hoping that then that 
encourages them to come and stay and think about how the the gathering is a part of their all the time youth ministry mm-hmm. that it's not so that we kind of go back and forth and that we're talking about the gathering but we're also talking about what happens in your youth ministry the other three years um in that cycle yeah yeah are there are there things that you've learned uh that you didn't know before about youth ministry uh that you've that you've learned from all of these uh, experts that you've been able to talk to over the last year and a half. That'll be a, that'll be a four part episode <laughs> oh about what we've learned or what, I don't know, maybe six or to eight. Something <laughs> uh, well, like that. I can say the thing that's been resonating with me lately has been, um, especially considering where we're at right now with mm-hmm. the pandemic has been, we've had a number of people talk recently about the need to take risk, yeah. at some, you know, mm-hmm. not like ridiculous risk, but, but really a uh, well thought out risk in order to give leadership to young people or get the gospel out to young people in the community um, and thinking about that in different ways. And that was never something I really thought about when I was <laughs> doing it this year. It was like, how am I taking calculated risk here? Mm-hmm. I was more like, uh, how can I mediate risk? How yeah. can I manage it? How can mm-hmm. I keep it limited? Um, and so now I think, you know, if I were back in the congregation, I would be thinking much more about how am I taking calculated risks to be able to get the gospel out to help encourage young people to be thinking about their leadership in the church um, and how risk is a part of sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, We've heard that from, it was one of those things that built kind of over, I think Mm -hmm. it's probably been two or three different episodes Mm -hmm. in the last six months that have really kind of hit that in different ways. So that's been one that's been resonating with me lately. I think one thing I've learned is, man, when when churches and youth ministries, you know, they don't go to the silo approach and really work together in the broad base of where their ministries are focused or working and communication is strong and you have those shared goals, what youth ministry can do and not only for the young people themselves, but then the the foundation that provides for them when they think to their future vocations in terms of as parents, as volunteers in church work or they actually go into church work that what that provides when we're able to communicate that bigger picture of God's uh, life given to us as the church and as individuals. And so I think that's been something I've taken away when you hear people in their context talk about that and to say like, oh, I could take Sunday morning and apply it to my everyday life or into my service in youth ministry was huge. And I, that's been really beautiful to see that. I love that it's distinctively Lutheran too. Like I love that there was, I believe it was a whole episode about our living our baptismal vocations boldly. I'm trying to remember the name of the episode, but it was, it was about living our, our baptismal vocations. And I just, I appreciate that because there, there are a plethora of, of resources and, and some are very valuable from other places, but to know um, that this is an LCMS youth resource that uh, when you're listening to it, uh, you know that it's folks who are coming from that that LCMS perspective as well. Now you mentioned gave us a, a you gave us a little insight of what's coming in the future in terms of preparation for the LCMS National Youth Gathering, a whole series to to help uh, equip and, and prepare for that. Um, I have to ask uh, since it's in Houston, the 2022 LCMS National Youth Gathering is in Houston. Is there one episode that prepares us on um, how to speak Texan so that we're prepared <laughs> when we go to Houston? in 2022. We're going to be talking about yeah. Houston. Yeah. And we we have someone on our staff who grew up in Houston. And so um, so we will be, yeah, we will be definitely talking about all things uh, Texas at least a little bit um, to be able to kind of get people acclimated to, to what to expect there. We're excited to be there. Very good. Very good. Any other hints about what's coming or what you're planning for the the, the coming year? I know you guys are really good planners. <laughs> we're trying. So we're, we're going to finish up our series uh, through Connected for Life, and that'll come out in the next uh, little bit through the spring. Um, and then as we get into the summer, we're going to be talking about how you take kind of bigger picture youth ministry things and break it out into particular contexts. So we're going to talk about like what, what might be different about youth ministry in a rural or small town versus in an urban setting um and so kind of thinking about what does how does context play into how we're we're working with our young people within our congregation so i think that's the next series um after that i'm not i'm not remembering either 
<laughs> they might have some planning to do. You got to listen to learn, <laughs> yeah. right? You gotta... We do, but we uh, and we're always looking for suggestions. Yeah. So certainly, if people want to know more, um, they can go to our our Facebook page or or connect with us, email us. Um, I think we have all that information on the KFU website, like how to reach out to us. Um, but we'd love to know what's helpful for people. And, and that's always great to hear uh, from folks about what they like to hear and what would be helpful for them. Very good. Very good. So check it out. The End Goals podcast on the KFUO website, kfuo.org slash youth ministry, right? KFUO.org slash end goals. Slash end goals. I'll get it right. KFUO.org slash end goals. Uh, you can find the podcast there or just about any other podcast platform as well. And uh, as Mark points out in every episode, when you're listening to, after you listen to a couple episodes, be sure to subscribe and mm-hmm. to give a review, review. as well, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that uh, that helps them continue to grow. And we, I've just enjoyed the partnership. I, I love End Goals, and I'm so grateful that, that you guys are putting in all the work, um, because I get to listen to a good po- podcast every other week and, and share that with our listeners as well. The Reverend Mark Kiesling, Director of LCMS Youth Ministry. Mark, thanks so much for being our guest. Thanks for having us. DCE Juliana Schultz, Manager for LCMS Youth Ministry. Thanks so much for being our guest. Glad to be here. share 2021. You can support KFUO. Call 1-800-730-2727. 1-800-730-2727. Or you can make a gift right from your mobile device by texting the letters KFUO to the number 41444. That's 41444 and type in KFUO as the message. You can make a gift right there from your mobile device. share 2021. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.